Hey, y'all, what's going on? Thank you for your patience. I was having some uh, technical difficulties today. Must be something in the air. Give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, our uh, Amazon Live crew going. Should be ready in a second. There we go. Beautiful. Welcome. My name is Damon Brown. I'm a DamonBrown.net. Not of it, but I'm part of it. <laughs> DamonBrown.net. My main thing is helping you as a side hustler, a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. I'm author of the new book, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. If you're checking out on Amazon, you can click the link. Uh, if uh, you're uh, new to the program or you're catching me on YouTube, whatever, check the links below on uh, all that good stuff. Uh, you can also go to DamonBrown.net to get it directly from me or you can go to your favorite retailer. It's available on uh, audiobook. It's available all the digital platforms. You can get the hardcover from Amazon. That's exclusive over there. So come check it out. It just came out a few months ago. I appreciate all the love and support. Um, again, this is a Bring Your Worth show based on my imprint called Bring Your Worth and my book from two years ago that became the basis of the books that I publish on my own. So super proud of that. Thank you for all the support and love that y'all been giving. If you want to check out the Bring Your Worst show, it's every Monday, Wednesday, <clears throat> and Friday at uh, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Uh, so please come through. You can subscribe now for free. Let's me know that you're loving the programming. I'm talking about uh, how to be a non-traditional entrepreneur. So I have two little kids at home. It's been crazy with the pandemic, and I've been able to do my startups, sold one of them. Um, I've written seven books in the last uh, eight years that my son has been alive, my first son. So just being part of that process, I want to give those tools to you. I'm the uh, author of the previous bestseller, uh, The Ultimate Bite Size Entrepreneur. Y'all gave it a lot of love, which I appreciate. I give a lot of gems in there. But also in the new book, Though From Now, I talk about how we can create a post-pandemic world based on <clears throat> Our own values and insights and all that good stuff. If you want to learn more about Built From Now, you can take the free quiz at builtfromnowquiz.com. It takes two minutes. I designed it myself. We're approaching a thousand people that have taken it, and it'll tell you what your main resource is right now and what you need to focus on and how you can quite literally build from now. So I appreciate the love and support. Um, I recently talked at the entrepreneur conference. So it's for people who are authors or want to be authors and writers and want to make a living at it and become uh, business people. And I talked about passive income and other things that ran um, at the keynote the weekend before last. Time is flying. <laughs> now that things are kind of moving in the world, suddenly time is going a lot faster. So that was the Sunday before last. Uh, if you missed it, don't fret. You can go over and check out the Authorpreneur, author, sorry, it's the Authorpreneur Conference, but it's at theauthorconference.com. You can use the code DAMON15 to get a discount on the already deep discount. You can watch the replay like you were there. So come through for that. Um, for today, I'm actually going to be connecting with uh, Cami uh, Groves, and she's going to be uh, having a live Q&A with me about showing up how you are. It's part of the ADP list, as you can see in the link below. Come through. It's free to all, but you do have to get in there. I think it's capacity of like 200 people, and we're approaching that. So come through and uh, get some insight from that. I believe it's 4 p.m. At least I should know this because I'm going to be there. 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so 4 p.m. today, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be about an hour. I'm going to be giving insights from Built From Now, as well as having a Q&A towards the second half, where Cam and I are going to be chopping it up, as they say, and also talk, taking answers and questions, taking questions from the audience, and hopefully getting answers that you guys can run with. Be sure and click on that link. I don't know how close we are to capacity, but come through. Again, it's a, some free programming for you. And lastly, I was featured on Black Tech Green Money, which is part of Afrotech. I've involved, been involved with Afrotech for a while. I love the work they do over there. It's uh, technology and I guess kind of obvious geared towards African Americans and specifically people of color that are from African descent or diaspora, I believe is the word that we're using today. Um, I talk about um, building from now and I talk about how you can create a business from wherever you happen to be at you know, your seat on the bus, as other people might say. Uh, talks about Bill from now, but also have a good conversation with Will Lucas, a fellow entrepreneur that I've known for a long time, about um, whether you should start with the idea or if you should build up your skills and then pursue the idea. Uh, if you should bootstrap, what kind of metrics you should have if you're going to get into the creative fields and, and, and create things. Like, um, you know, is your metric to be a millionaire? Is your metric to 
uh, have, you know, 1,000 sold or 1,000 products shipped, et cetera. I talk about all that. So I think it's a really good episode. If you want a brief excerpt of the episode, this is just the audio of it. You can go over to the Bring Your Worst show. I have an excerpt. It's like five minutes long. It's just a video of Will and I talking. Part of a bigger thing where we end up talking, I think, for like 45 minutes. But this is an excerpt if you want to see what you're getting into. It's learning skills versus building the idea first. So I chopped it up and made it nice and digestible. I think the excerpt's like five minutes. So check it out now. If you want to go deeper, check out the podcast um, and the video that I have both linked in that. All right. So today we're going to talk about public speaking. Um, I've been a public speaker probably my whole life. <laughs> you know, according to my parents, I always like to talk and, and communicate, whether it's with words on paper or speaking out loud. Um, I got serious about public speaking around the time that actually I became an entrepreneur and our first son was born. Again, he's about to turn eight. And so about eight years ago, I started getting serious about it. So I became an entrepreneur at the exact same time I became the primary care caregiver of uh, my wife and I's first son. She has a more traditional job. So she went back to work at four months when he was four months and it was just me and him. Um, around that time, I started my first startup. My first app was called So Quotable, which allowed you to capture people, capture people's quotes, not capture people, capture people, it's a different app, capture people's quotes. And uh, it got a cult following as they say. So didn't have a whole lot of users, but the users that did use it were really into it. That led to me doing my first TED talk. And I was talking about um, um, the positive power of observation. And, I, and it's only like a four minute TED talk. And it changed my life, changed my career. You can actually check out the TED talk um, here on this playlist. Sorry for that mess. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I got the wrong link in there. There we go. That's the link that y'all need. Sorry, some technical difficulties earlier. And so um, click on that. You can watch all my TED talks. I've done four. So four in the last seven years. And my first TED talk was three and a half minutes long. I made it short on purpose. That's worth a whole different discussion because I want to kind of get to the meat where I can help you all the most. But by me doing a short TED talk, I was really able to maximize my time up there. I wanted no fluff. My background is journalism. I don't believe in wasted words. And so it was like, okay, it's three and a half minutes long. And it quite literally changed my career. Um, that led to me doing my second startup called Cuddler, which connected people for hugs. And I was one of three, three co-founders and we had a quarter million users uh, at our peak within the first year and sold it before our first year was up. And that was all why I was just the primary caregiver of our first son who, when we sold the app, Cuddler, when we sold the business, he had just turned two. So this is what I was going through six years ago and I'm doing two TED Talks, have my little guy at home um, and, and did my first two startups. And so, there's a power in public speaking, even if you don't consider yourself a public speaker. I became a professional later. TED Talks are not paid, so let's get that off the, off the block. People get confused about that and they think if you do a TED Talk, you become a millionaire based on that. No, actually, all of it is pro bono. So whether it's um, uh, Al Gore, you know, who might have spoken the same one I spoke at. It's Al Gore, it's Bono, who spoke the year before I spoke, and it's me, raw in the paid, which is goose eggs, nothing. We're all getting paid the same thing. And so what you really want to do is with your public speaking, look at it as a way to level up whatever you're trying to do. Based on that TED talk, which as of this recording, people have watched it 18,000 times on my YouTube channel, um, which still is phenomenal to me. And so 18,000 people, maybe some repeats, but 18,000 people sat and just watched those three and a half minutes while I was talking. And there's a, a power in that. And not in the ego way power, but a power in, in that you can nourish and change the world based on public speaking. Again, this is a three and a half minute talk. I pra practiced it hundreds of times and it changed the, tra the tra trajectory. I can't see, we're talking about public speaking and I can't even speak today. It changed the trajectory of, of, of my career, my life, the amount of impact, right? If I didn't do that first TED talk seven years ago, those three and a half minutes, just like a song, three and a half minutes, I wouldn't be talking to you right, right now. I wouldn't have a coaching business, to be honest. I don't think the Bites as Entrepreneur, which y'all made a bestseller, would have even come out, you know? And so I don't know. I don't know. It would have been a different life. I'll put it like that. And so it's not just the financial part where I get paid well to do public speaking now. Um, but it's not just the financial part. It's also you making an impact.
And so if you have a book out, just like mine, um, my new one, um, Go From Now, if you have a product out, like I have a Go From Now t-shirt that I'm wearing, you get a DanBrown.net. Whatever impact you're trying to make, public speaking can help you do that. And so what I'm gonna go over today are um, a few books, one of them mine, a couple of them from people that I really respect that will help you level up your public speaking game. And in fact, the one that I'm including that's mine is a little bit offbeat, but once I explain it, I think you'll understand. Anyway, if you wanna check out my TED Talks, you can uh, click the link right there or go over and uh, subscribe to, um, excuse me, the Bring Your Worst show at this link here. Again, it's free. It comes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And there are TED Talks interspersed in there. So however you want to do it. All right, the first one I recommend, seems like an obvious one. It's called TED Talks. I actually have a physical copy around here, but I just rearranged my office. So I don't know where it is. So my apologies. If you're checking out on Amazon Live, you'll see the link lit up. Lit up. It's by Chris Anderson. Um, like I said, I had a chance to work with him many years ago when I did my first TED Talk because I was on the second stage of the main program. So you know how you have the, the concerts and they'll have like the main stage and now the second stage on the side. I was the second stage dude, um, but I got a chance to get to know Chris Anderson. Um, I love his vision. I respect his humor as well. He's a very funny guy, extremely dry. If you watch any him do any of his TED Talks or do any of the um, hosting of the events because he's the the leader of TED now, after after he became the leader probably like 15 years ago, do you know how dry his sense of humor is? It's all in this book. Like, remember, Chris Anderson's been running TED probably since you first heard of TED. And so I heard of TED maybe a little bit when the previous owner, um, the founder, and I cannot remember his name, so my apologies. I hope he's doing well. Um, Chris Anderson actually purchased it from him. Um, and it was a little conference in Monterey, if you know California at all. Monterey is known for Monterey Bay. It's also known for um, um, the um, what's it called fishing. Um, and it's known for having an amazing aquarium. But if you know Northern California, you already know. You already know the deal with Monterey. And it was a, it was a little conference there. Chris actually took it over and bought it. I think his name was Steven. I forget his last name. Bought it probably, I don't know, 25 years ago, something like that and then transformed it into what it is today. And I, th and then I think the that's a, I think that's the beauty about it. Actually, the internet's working fine, honey. Actually, I was, Hold on one second. It was, it was at 6%, but I then I was going to do some prodigy, but then it started on, on not connected to signal. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, after I finish my show, I'll go and take a look at it, okay? Can you I, go on? I checked in the bedroom mm -hmm. internet and something and it was still plugged in and, and, and so and so then I went into the place with Julie. Well I'm actually on the internet right now, so it's working okay. Okay. I have to go ahead and wrap up my talk, okay? Can you close the door, honey? Yeah, thank you. Can you close the door? <laughs> Hold on one second. You can look at my uh, like my bookcase. Maybe you can find the TED Talk book up there. Because <laughs> I can't find it. Man, I'm trying to be efficient and be a minimalist, which I normally am. And because I've been working on Bill from now and other projects, my office has gotten so, so big. Suddenly it feels really crowded, probably because I got new books coming in. A lot of my colleagues and friends are coming out with books and they're kind of all over the place. So I call myself organizing it and I can't find the book for y'all. But that kind of gets me to my point, or at least it should. Um, so this is from Chris Anderson. So he like is essentially the master of the TED Talk. The TED Talk you know now, the reason why you're craving to do a TED Talk is because of him. Right. He became he came up with the format along with his team and I can shout them all out, but it would take too long. But I know them and I, and I love you because I've worked with them in the past and I love the work that they're doing now beyond Ted. Anyway, he gives all the game in the book, like, all the game. I love it. Love the book. Um, I've done some columns about it at uh, inkdamonbrown.com for my Ink Magazine column. So feel free to go to inkdamonbrown.com. Um, so I won't spend much more time on it, but it's a really good book. It's really simple. It's really straightforward. And he gives a lot of examples. They also have an app, which if I thought about it, I would have included, included the link. There's an app that actually will teach you how to do a TED Talk. And it's done by, like a course. 
And I thought it was, yeah, it came out like three years ago. I thought it was really fly. I'm going old school now. I thought it was really fly. I thought it, I thought it was done very well. Um, it's essentially inspired by this book called TED Talks. Again, it's gotten really good reviews. I read it. I've done, again, four TED Talks. I think this is a really good game for y'all. So if you want to become a better public speaker, you do not have to do TED Talks. And you don't have to do TED style talks, but there's something to learn from TED Talks, if that makes sense. My talks actually are beyond TED Talks. My book talks are actually different. Some of the styles and techniques that I use, TED doesn't, doesn't go for, right? Because if you see some of my keynotes, like my aforementioned keynote that I did at, um, at the Entrepreneur Conference, um, you know, two weeks ago, Sunday before last, it might not work as a TED Talk. Number one, it's too long. It's like 25 minutes long. Number two, some of the stylistic things that I choose wouldn't be TED style, but I know how to do a TED Talk. And so put this into your toolbox and a certain insights and certain game that I got from starting off doing TED Talks. And then I became a professional speaker and I know what to do and what not to do. I understand the rules of this box and now that I'm a professional speaker, then I'm able to leave that box. But you gotta get your game first. You gotta start with the game, right? Um, I actually did a, a video about it probably about three, four months ago, around the time that I started the Bring Your Work show about want to do a TED Talk. And here are three things that all TED, TED, TED Talkers, TED speakers have in common. And I break it down into three. I think it's like a 12 minute video. Check it out. Again, it's part of the Bring Your show. Uh, if you like it, I'm talking about it now, then that's the deal with that, all right? So then, if you wanna go ahead and watch what I'm doing, be sure and check out the um, my TED Talks. You know, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, you also might be able to see, uh, and yeah, I, I wanna be transparent with y'all. If you go ahead and see my first TED Talk, sorry, you can barely see me down here. That messed up link. If, um, if you see my first TED Talk, which was March of 2014, man. So as of this recording, I was seven years ago. That's crazy. Um, if you watch that compared to the TED Talk I just did, which was September uh, 2020, so about six, seven months ago, about um, how to build power wherever you are, which is based on my new book, Built From Now. Um, it's kind of a precursor to Built From Now with the TED Talk. You'll see the progression, hopefully in a good way but you'll see how things change. And so the way that I handled my TED Talk in September of 2020, 2020, sorry, it's 2021 now, I'm confused. In September, 2020, the last TED Talk I did, my fourth one, is very different than the more by the book, traditional TED Talk that I am doing in March of 2014. Don't get me lying as far as which, <laughs> which, which day is which, but, be sure and check it out. I think you'll get some good insight from that. Sweetheart, I'm still in the middle of my show. No, I'm I'm trying to tell sweetheart. You. Yep, you already told me. So I'm going to be done in about 15 minutes. Okay. Because we know that Elmo not Sweetheart, no, no, not right now. You're actually going to wait for a few minutes. So I'm going to be about 10 more minutes. Can okay? we do the Elmo number No, game? not right now. No, you're going to take a break, okay? I'll be like 10 more minutes. Can you close the door? Thank you, baby. And so... <laughs> The nice thing about ha having kids at home and we're obviously sheltering in place still is that it's very much like <laughs> like doing public speaking where people are going to be coming up and saying stuff and you're going to be in the middle of your talk you got to make sure that your stuff is straight so yeah if you're if you're trying to do the virtual speaking or you're speaking while sheltering in place wherever you happen to be in the world hopefully you're safe if you do have people distracting you look at that as training because this is exactly how it works, all right? You gotta make sure that you stay on track. All right, so if you wanna check out my TED Talks, do that. Uh, the next book I would recommend is actually called Fascinate by Sally, Hog Sally Hogshead. I can't forget her name out. Um, she's actually um, came from the advertising industry and you know they have a lot of insight as far as what words they use and all that stuff. She left the industry, became a really popular TED, TED speaker. I think her TED Talk is definitely a top 3% in the world. Like it's got millions of views. If I would have thought about it, I would have linked it, but just look up Sally Hogshead. Even if you Google it or do a search, it'll pop up right away. Or you can go to ted.com, look up Sally Hogshead. You will not forget her name. And um, she decided to boil down things into how people are able to build tribes and get attention. And so she talks about that fascinating. 
where everyone has a formula. I forget, I read it a couple of years ago, so I'm forgetting the, that part of the detail. But I think everyone has either three or four different pieces that it might be passion, it might be uh, insight, it might be argument and persuasion. We all have different traits. And once we figure out what that combination is, which is similar to build from now, I'm talking about it from a business standpoint of focus, agility, time, and energy. So this is, you know, so thank you, Sally, for being, being a forerunner of that. Once you figure out what that blend is, then you can infuse that into your talk using certain words. Right. So if yours, if you're, let's say if yours happens to be passion, which I believe mine is one, as you can tell by me waving my arms all over the place. Um, if your if your strength happens to be passion, then maybe you can use extreme words in your talk, like never or always, or you know, silly, you know, crazy, like like these types of words, hopefully not offensive, these types of words, and they can empower your talk. So she breaks it down into a science. And I think it's a really good, solid book. I don't read it all the time. Like I said, I'm getting foggy on it as, as I speak, but you need it. It's usually on my shelf, but again, I've been moving stuff around, but it's li literally usually on my shelf right where I'm pointing, it's there. And so usually not when I'm working on talks, I tend to go into my monk mode and I'm just focused on that. Um, but sometimes I'll pull it out just to get some insight into what I should focus on on my next talk. Um, which is probably something for a whole discussion we'll have on another show. Probably not a live one, but maybe a recorded one where I'll talk about the different parts of uh, of speaking. I forgot to say at the top, I am um, also a speech coach. And so um, I work with uh, Heroic Public Speaking. Shout out to uh, to Michael. Um, I also, Michael Port, that is. Um, I also um, do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is available at DamonBrown.net. And then I've worked behind the scenes at some of the TEDx's and other events, shout out to all of them that I worked with over the years. So I understand the different pieces that are happening behind the scenes, not just with the speaking, but actually breaking down the speech. Uh, Fascinates a good, a good book to read about that, all right? Uh, if you're kind of dealing with what I'm talking about today and you want to become a, a better public speaker, but then you're talking to a computer, <laughs> which a lot of us are, you're talking to your phone, um, I have a really strong video um, that's a previous episode from Bring Your Worth, Again, the Monday, Wednesday, one of the Monday, Wednesday, Friday shows. Um, you can, again, watch it for free, subscribe for free. It's how to do public speaking today. And I talk about three different things that modern public speakers need to work with. Um, I know that we're <laughs> going through the time pretty quickly, partially because my son came in, partially because there's some technical difficulties at the top. So I will not even get into those. Just check out the video. I highly recommend it. If you can't watch it now, bookmark it. Again, all this stuff is free. So please take advantage of it. I'm here for you. All right, the last book I'd recommend is actually one of my own. It's called The Passive Writer, uh, Five Ways to Make Money in Your Sleep. Um, it is a tiny, tiny book, tiny book. You can read it really quickly. We have some cool stuff happening with The Passive Writer happening uh, later on this year. But right now it's available on, in paperback and on Kindle. I did it with my good friend, Jeanette Hurt. You can see her on the back there. You can see my, my mug up there. But Jeanette Hurt's an awesome author. She's doing some marvelous stuff right now. Like, I can't wait to tell y'all about it. She's right now. She's the author of the uh, best-selling book, the, out, the unofficial Audi cookbook. So she's like doing great stuff. We came and actually did this book uh, three, four years ago, uh, based on a major talk that we had at the American Society of Journalists and Authors. It was standing room only, and we looked at each other. We're like, maybe we should do a book about this. And then we ended up doing the book two months later. That's the nice thing about having your own publishing imprint is actually on um, Bring Your Worth Publishing, so we publish it ourselves. Um, highly recommend that, by the way, not only the book, but also figuring out the best way that you can connect with people on your own terms and not having to go through necessarily a traditional publisher unless you really want to get that, that extended reach. Anyway, the passive writer talks about, um, even though it's about writing, it talks about reusing the stuff that you got. So when you're working on your keynote or when you're doing um, a speaking engagement, it doesn't have to be completely original. It could be taken from an article that you wrote. It could be taken from um, a TikTok that you made. And then you extend that 15, 20, 30 second TikTok into a 30 minute talk. And so one of the best ways to become a better public speaker is to know whatever you're talking about. You're already an expert at something, maybe a few things. You don't have to recreate the wheel just because you want to do public speaking. In fact, it's the opposite. What do you know? 
right? Now you're gonna be doing research and finding new stuff to talk about in your speech, but it doesn't mean that you have to start from scratch. In other words, if you're already a writer or if you're already um, used to talking with your family or being an impromptu coach to people, if you have friends that come to you and ask for advice or whatever, you already know what you're talking about. You just need to translate that into a palatable, I think that's the right word, palatable speech that other people will understand, right? So me talking about non-traditional entrepreneurs, the solopreneurs, the side hustlers, what I do with that, I was already doing that with friends, family, and other people who wanted to start their businesses, but didn't look like or act like Elon Musk, which I obviously don't look or act like Elon Musk either, but this is particularly back in the day. And so all I did was translate that into my ink column. I translate that into, um, you know, the bite size entrepreneur. I translated that into the keynotes that are again available at a, for free at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. All my keynotes are on there. Like, so that's all I did was translate into a different medium. And as I said, in a recent, a recent, um, a recent um, talk that I did, we tend to get caught up in, um, in the medium, how we do things versus the message, what we're saying. And what I like you to do, and I talk about that in the Passive Writer with Jeanette, what I want you to do is think about whatever message you're trying to get out there and thinking about doing it in a different format. That's what public speaking is. So you're doing a different format in front of a bunch of people. That's what you're doing. But you're saying the same thing that you might say, you know, when you're having a drink with someone or having a coffee, or when you're talking to a family member that wants insight about what you know, right? If you happen to know plumbing really well, then, you know, you're telling someone, oh, okay, you have to do this with the pipe. You have to do that with a pipe. What you want to know about plumbing is this, that, and the third. You could be having a coffee with someone. Okay, so then now you're doing it on a stage with 100 people in front of you. Your message is the same. It's just the medium is different. We talk about that a lot in the Passive Writer. <clears throat> so even if you're not a writer and you want to become a better public speaker, this book is worth getting just because we talk about translating things, even to the stage but translating things to different mediums. Um, I talk about more about passive income. If you're curious about that aspect of it um, and how to be begin passive income, there's, I think this one is like a 30 minute live, if I remember correctly, but check it out. We had some really good insights, I think that came out during that and you guys seem to appreciate it. It's uh, one of my most talked about videos. And so uh, be sure and get some insight from that if you wanna learn more about passive income. That actually ties to being a better public speaker because as you become as you find more ways to get your message out there, that's actually part of the passive income journey. Like me talking to you, this content could become an ink column at inktamerbrown.com. It could become a new chapter in my next book. Um, it could become a lot of things and that becomes passive income because I'm only doing it once. And so my ability and my confidence in talking to you, part of that reason is because I've talked about it and written about it many other times. That ties into passive income. So. Passive income, the rewards you're getting aren't just financial, but it's also the brain power and the confidence that you're getting because you really know your stuff and you're finding different ways to distribute it. My last video on this is how Beyonce makes money off of money, which talks very much about passive income. If you're like, I don't want to listen to a half an hour about it, um, but I do want to listen to something. I think this video of mine, it's like three, it's not three minutes long. I'd say like seven, eight minutes long. And I talk about all these different examples of how you can create something once and get paid multiple times. That pay, again, isn't just financial, but it's also as far as your energy. And the more that you talk about something, the better you're gonna be a public speaker about it. All right, listen, I think our half an hour is almost up. I think five minutes was hanging out with my kids. So I appreciate your flexibility with that. And I guess you got a chance to, to hear more about, about my daily life as a father. If you wanna subscribe, you subscribe now for free at uh, youtube.com slash Brown Damon, et cetera, down there. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I have not missed one yet. I want to keep that streak going. I love your support. The comments and all that have been lit. I appreciate it. And you can learn more about Build From Now. Take the free quiz at buildfromnowquiz.com. That is my new book. And remember, you can always bring your worth, and then you can always build from now. Take care.